Today, I got 15 secret tips to help you become a better player in Black Ops 6. Tip number one. In this game, in Call of Duty Black Ops 6, you can actually jump off the zips like you can in Warzone. Now, this is going to be useful to do at times, especially if you're anticipating an opponent holding the top of the zip. You can jump off kill them you can also just be on top of the zip you think there's a guy up top you jump off immediately so you don't die and fully zip all the way now a quick tip with this if you try to jump off when you're about like 80 percent or higher you're not going to be able to jump off the animation is so quick that it's going to get you up and keep you stuck there and you're basically gonna have to commit at that point but once you get the timing down you can definitely use this to your advantage to either gain information maybe get a quick kill and for sure stay alive Tip number two, there's a lot of cheeky nade spots, but this one is very cool and interesting and I really want to share with you guys. So basically, you can throw a frag grenade through these two little vents up top. Now, this nade is going to land literally on the bomb and kill whoever is there. It has a high success rate and it's really cool that they implemented this into the game. So you can definitely use this to your advantage and search and destroy to get a free kill. Maybe you can't get to the bomb in time. Your teammates calling out, hey, they're planting. Throw that bad boy in and take them out. Tip number three. Now, we've seen this in previous CODs, and it's in this one as well, especially because the sun is bright. You got shadows in this game, and the shadows gave you a lot of information. If you have the shadow setting on, you're going to be able to see your opponent pushing you on certain parts of the map and it tell i'm telling you man it's basically a cheat code right you get to see them coming you get the first shot you get to just take them out without them knowing you're there and it's definitely very usable so make sure you have your shadow settings on make sure you're paying attention on the map and putting yourself in those spots where the shadow can come and be your best friend tip number four now you've probably seen this on nuketown or maybe on other maps but just like you can in nuketown skyline there's some really cool rcxd spots that can be used very effectively there's a little uh nerd spot as i like to call it that you can go through and basically use this rcxd to get behind your opponents either getting information and you know call them out or two, you can set yourself up to get a kill because they're going to be like, what the heck? This thing came from the sky. You really can throw people off because they try to hear the RCXD to maybe shoot it, maybe run away. But it's hard to catch this one. It's hard to read where this one's coming from. So you can use these RCXDs. There's one on Nuketown as well. Hope you enjoyed this little trick. Use it in search and destroy mainly, or you can use it on a respawn if you'd like. Tip number five, you can shoot the doors to open them. And that is actually pretty cool because that can be used to your advantage. Previous cards, you have to bounce the door open. You have to open the door. And you know, that alone can put you in a bad position or an enemy will hear you coming and just peek out the door and kill you. Now, you can actually shoot them open, which is really cool. And you definitely want to use that in your gameplay. But two, don't forget that you can also wall bang them. So if you shoot a door and you see an enemy go in a corner or, you know, you think he's there, shoot the door open and then boom, shoot through that, shoot through the corner, shoot through the door. And one, you either get hit markers or two, you checked it without having to overextend. You checked it and you shot. It was like, oh, nobody's there. Beautiful. So you just keep running. So it's really good and really useful. Tip number six in Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and just like some previous CODs, there's now this ledge animation, which is very slow to mantle, as you can see. And that can get you killed sometimes or obviously your gun won't be out in time for you to kill somebody. But you what you want to do is be able to do the fast mantle. So you don't want this ledge mantle, right? You want to be able to do this fast mantle just like that. And you're probably wondering, well, how do I do the fast mantle? Why do I keep getting on this damn ledge? And you can see you just mantle a lot quicker. You obviously have your gun up, ready to fight. You're ready to move a little bit quicker. It's about half the time. To do that, you're simply just going to want to get on higher places and be, then jump on whatever spot you want to be. If I'm too low and I try to do this, like let's say right here, it's going to give me the ledge. But you want to get just higher up in any area you're at. If you're whatever you're trying to mantle, it's going to give you that fast mantle. And that little tip right there can save your life or even help you get kills at times. Tip number seven. This is extremely important in Black Ops 6. And we're going to be talking about your dead zones very quickly. So go to your controller. If you're especially if you're a controller, go to dead zones inputs. And you're going to see really quickly my dead zones are very low. So by default, these are on 15 for your right stick and your left stick. Your left stick, you're going to automatically want to drop this to zero or one. This is going to make your stick more reactive when it comes to movement and not because 15 is just a little too high. For your left stick max, you're going to want to sit between 55 to 75. That's the highest I recommend and the lowest I recommend. I'm currently on 55. It's going to make your movement and again, your stick just be more quicker, reactive. It's going to, it's going to hit the maximum inputs very quickly. So right here, you can see there's a big red circle. 
my stick automatically fully maximizes half almost halfway through the the circle so i get that's why you see my movement becomes so fast and then for your right stick 15 dead zone is affecting your aim you're gonna want to drop it down to five at least five if you have to do anything higher than that you shouldn't have to unless your stick drift is just broken five i play on usually three or four because it just feels a little bit better you feel like you have more kind of stick to your aim and this is going to automatically again just make your left stick and your movement super reactive as you can see i'm just i'm like almost gliding around the map you don't really see me get much dead slides you don't see me messing up my movement and a part of that is the dead zones i tell you right now it is a game changer move change those left stick zones especially your left stick your movement is going to feel three four five times better and you lower your dead zone on your right stick you're going to notice your aim you're going to have more control of your stick which is going to allow you to be a little bit more snappy. Tip number eight. There's actually a really cool movement you can do in Black Ops 6 thanks to Omni movement, but also understanding how the movement works. So to do this, first of all, you're going to want to turn on this guy. But seriously, <laughs> am I recording? I feel like I'm recording. For this mechanic, you're going to want to go all the way to the full tactical sprint. And then you're going to want to slide and hold your slide. And it's going to put you in this prone position. And you can actually chain this. So I can do something like this. And then you want to sprint up, sprint forward. It's going to pick you back up. So you can do stuff like this. And it's a very crazy movement you can do in BL6 thanks to the Omni movement. As you can see, you can constantly just get back up, prone down, kill somebody, get back up. And you don't even need to kill anybody with this. You can just kind of get ready for a gunfight here. And it's kind of like a slide into a drop shot. And you know how the Omni movement makes you turn sideways sometimes. It looks pretty insane. You go on your belly out of nowhere. So this movement is pretty easy to do. It's very effective. But obviously, it takes a little bit of mastering. Tip number nine. If you... <clears throat> Tip number nine. You can actually pull out your combat knife in Black Ops 6. So why is this so important? On top of it, being able to one melee people up close... Well, this gives you unlimited tactical sprint. So a lot of things you're going to see while watching the Call of Duty Pro League or good players play. As soon as they spawn, they're going to pull out their knife and they're going to sprint towards wherever they're trying to sprint. Now, obviously, because they can fully tactical sprint and not have to stop. So this is really good to use if you're trying to get from A to B or if you're off spawn trying to rush somewhere very quickly, pull out your knife, then pull out your gun. Another thing to know about the combat knife, though, is whatever gun you had out previously is what's going to come out. So if I have my a uh, sub AR out, whatever, and I pull out my knife and I go back, it's going to be my sub. If I have my pistol out and I pull out my knife, it's going to be the pistol. So always remember that. So you have the right gun out as well. Tip number 10, and this is very useful information. A lot of people don't know this, but if you go to your weapons... And let's say you go to a specific gun or a specific class. If you press R2, or I guess it depends for, you know, it could be R1 for you. Or, you know, depending what key for mouse and key. But basically, it will tell you a lot of information on the weapon. So it tells you the fire rate, tells you the recoil control, tells you the mobility. And it also tells you how much damage it does. So, for example, this has a 27 damage at 16.8 meters max for the short range. And this is going to be a four-shot kill. So, doing the math really quickly... This is a good example. You understand how many bullets it takes to kill, the fire rate, what kills quicker, and that is on the Jackal. For example, if I go on the KSV, this has a 26 damage, 15 range, so slightly lower, but still is a four-shot kill. Again, it's 100 health per player, 800 RPM, so it has even higher fire rate. So technically, this kills up to 15 meters quicker than the Jackal. So you get to understand a lot of these things, and also when you're building your attachments and switching attachments, you can see like what's affecting what. So if I want to change, let's say the ported compensator to muzzle break, you can see on the stats. Well, you can see because my camera's blocking it, but the settings and all this changes. For example, on the stock, you can see the negatives, and this is really useful to use. Tip number eleven. This goes hand in hand with your movement and understanding the best settings because they are a game changer in Black Ops Six, especially with Omni movement being implemented. So you're going to want to go to your controller and make sure to change these specific settings for better movement. So sprint assist, make sure your tactical sprint assist is on. Assist delay zero, sideways and backwards both on. It's going to help with your automatic attack sprint, with your omni movement left to right backwards. It's going to make it so much better. Mantle assist off, crouch assist off, corner slice. You can have that on if you want. I personally plan on hybrid. It's the best to use omni movement. You can slide and dive very easily and it's the most effective. If you hate diving, you also use slide only. I would not recommend the other ones. So make sure sprint restores on, slide maintain sprint on. Again, this is going to make your movement a lot more fluid. 
And I'm pretty sure, lastly, make sure you have a single attack sprint on. Those settings alone is going to make your movement feel two times, five times, ten times better. Tip number 12, jump shotting is not it in Black Ops 6. Now, I know you guys used to love jump shotting in previous CODs, and don't get me wrong, you can still do it in this game, but one, the pullout time is kind of slow when you jump shot. The only time it makes it a little better is when you have dexterity on, which I currently do have dexterity on this class, which makes it look decent. But jump shotting is just not the wave. You really want to just slide cancel for most of your gunfights and most of your movement. Utilizing the Omni movement, slide canceling, sliding, diving. Diving is not as good, but you can still dive here and there. But sliding is going to be your best friend, and that's going to allow you to get more kills and obviously dominate. So use jump shots in certain gunfights and randomly, like you want to jump shot, sure. But try to do it less, and it's going to help you play better. Tip number 13, your mini map is the most important thing, or at least one of the most important things in the game and on your HUD. And how do you make it better? So you can see right now, mine's magnified and it's a square. So if you change these settings really quickly, go to interface, go to your gameplay HUD. You're gonna wanna make sure your HUD preset is all magnified. This is gonna make it bigger and it's gonna be easier to see the red dots, see where you're at on the map, see where the enemies are on the map. And to top it off, you're gonna wanna make sure that your mini map shape is on square. Those two things alone will make your mini map more easier to see and bigger, and it's going to help you gain a lot of information. Tip number 14. Now, this could be huge in search and destroy mainly, and a lot of people don't know that you can stretch, plant, or should I say defuse the bomb. So normally, you have to stay on the bomb. They have their line of sights where they can see you, but in this game, you can actually slide and press square, and you can pull the bomb away from its normal position. And this is going to become very useful so you can pull it and stretch it and then get the bomb defused and win the round or win the game. Tip number 15. And trust me, this does make a difference. Most pro players play on this setting and for a good reason. That's why they shoot pretty damn straight, as you can see, just like I do. So you're going to want to go to your controller settings. You want to go to your aiming. Go to aiming advanced settings and make sure your sensitivity transition timing is on gradual and not on instant instant can make it a little bit more snappy but it will make you miss more compared to gradual that's why you see a lot of good players playing on gradual and they shoot lasers from range guys i hope you enjoyed today's video make sure to drop a like it helps a lot and don't forget to subscribe to the channel we'll be posting more content